Welcome back everybody to episode 18 in our F1 Manager 22 career mode. Role playing as Dario Franchitti, being the boss of Alpha Tari. Japanese Grand Prix up today. Pretty short turnaround as well. I think it's uh, less than a week. Yeah, there you go, four days. So not a long turnaround from a rather interesting Singapore Grand Prix. It is going to be spoiled for you now. We had our second podium with Pierre Gasly getting P2. Denied the chance right at the death to maybe challenge Leclerc for the win. Due to his teammate, uh, Yuki made a mistake with, I think it was about three laps to go, and took out Lewis Hamilton. They were both running top 10 and uh yeah yuki took him out locked up and just crunched straight into him so that obviously helps us in the points we closed down a little bit to mercedes because uh pierre finished higher than what george russell did but it also meant that we did not fulfill our or one of our sponsor obligations because both drivers did not finish top 12. got a few things coming up uh, manufacturing completed for a suspension there, the front wing there, and also our suspension research for next year's car is going to be complete. And then we got our scouts will be back just before the Japanese Grand Prix. So I'm going to go ahead and we will have a look at what research is available for next season. So there you go, that's what our tech chief is saying. There we have finished the research project on the suspension and helping or it will provide us with a nice little boost for next season's car. We should have enough time to do either another research project or a design project if we want to improve our car. We still have five races to go in the season so I don't know if we want to leave our car as is and focus purely on next season. I'm thinking we might be able to get one more thing done in terms of a design and then use the next aerodynamic testing period to focus solely on research. That's my plan. So let's see what we can do to the car. So here's our research page. As you can see, it says we've done one research into the chassis. We haven't done the front or rear wing yet. We're gonna do that next testing period. We have done one side pods. We just finished the suspension and we are currently working on the underfloor. So I had a quick look and I think chassis is probably going to be our best bet here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm not going to develop a third chassis. I'm just going to research this one into next year's. As you can see, there's the upgrade, if you like, that it would provide with us. We would get it up to 50% with the drag reduction, nearly 50% with the airflow in the middle, and about 1.5% better boosting for the engine cooling. 26 days is when the next ATR period is ready. So I'm gonna do this, and we're gonna jack these up, and we'll put everything on 24. So this will be ready at the same time that the underfloor will, and also the side pods that we're currently, oh sorry, not side pods, suspension parts that we're making. Everything will be ready in the 24 days. So I'm gonna do that, and we will have a second bite at the cherry, so to speak, with our chassis for next year. So let's go ahead and confirm that. And you know what? We still have one engineer available, we got 26 days until the next period. I'm thinking we could either do another research project into suspension, because that's the one that takes the least amount of time, or we could develop another suspension piece. I think we might develop it. I know I'm on the research page, but I think we will develop a new suspension. It only gives us a slight boost, but it will help a tiny bit with this year's car. And I think that might be the last piece 
that we put on this car. Because we'll probably be only, what, three races to go, I guess. It's going to be ready in like 20 something days. 25 days. We can also rush it. Get it ready in 17. We could go in tents, actually. Your engineers will put in extra hours to optimize this design. Cost will be higher, but you'll gain a greater car part expertise bonus, which will improve future designs of this car part. Your team's expertise in suspension development will increase at a faster rate per day, greatly improving all future suspension projects. So that might help us next year. It'll be ready on the 30th of October. So let's have a look at the calendar before we do anything. So we would have it for Brazil and Abu Dhabi, that's it. I think it might be worth it though. So we're gonna go in tents, it's gonna cost us 600 grand. So I'm gonna go ahead with that. And this will be the last part that we develop for this year's car. And then we can focus the next aerodynamic testing period with the front wing and rear wing. So I think we'll do that. Okay, so this is what we have going on for the car. We are currently manufacturing uh, more chassis, more rear wing, and also our third iteration of the suspension. We will be researching into next year's chassis, just to improve it a little bit. We're also halfway through the research into our underfloor for next year. And we're also gonna make a new suspension for this year's car. So everything's going to be ready basically in less than a month. Hopefully we'll be able to rush through some of the suspension parts and they'll be on in time for Brazil. That's my plan. We'll be able to emergency them, at least four, so we have two each, and then we can just normally build a whole bunch so we have enough in store if our drivers decide to have some off-track excursions at either Brazil or Abu Dhabi. So I just noticed that both our drivers have these little red exclamation marks. I think they're both there because both their contracts are expiring. If I click on him, it says renew contract. Yeah, remaining contract is in red. So I'm presuming that's why it has that little thing. We do want to re-sign Pierre Gasly. We know that. So we will do that later on. But I think now we should just head to the racetrack so unless something important pops up i will catch you at suzuka and i completely forgot that our scouts would be ready as well so there you go there's frederick vesti he has been fully scouted now he's only got two months left on his current deal xavier marcus padros over at ferrari also only has two months left on his deal I don't think he is interested in signing for us though, but we'll have to th think on that, I guess. Jared Murphy is also fully scouted over there at Mercedes. Also two months left and same with Simone Resta over at Haas, I believe. So I will go ahead and just pick four guys to scout and I will let you know who we're doing before we get to Japan. All right, so in 30 days time, we are going to be finished scouting two race engineers, uh, Williams, Gaten, Jago, and I believe it's McLaren's Christopher Hayes. And we are also scouting Antonio Giovinazzi, who is currently the reserve driver, I think, for Alfa Romeo or Ferrari. I think it's Ferrari and also Richard Vershaw, who is in F2. So they're the four guys that we're going to scout, and they will be ready in a month. Konnichiwa from the Suzuka circuit in Japan. This unique track is a favorite home for motorsports, and it welcomes us back this weekend. Get ready for exhilaration and speed with the Japanese Grand Prix. Drivers will battle it out this weekend on the staking turns of Suzuka, the only figure of eight track in Formula One. High-speed downforce will be the name of the game here. 
again, teams want to secure a place on that podium. This is it. We're down to the last few races of the season, and it's time for that final push. Who will be crowned champion at the end of it all? We'll find out soon enough. Okay then, let's get to it. Looks like we'll be in for a wet Saturday. Whether we get rain in practice three or qualifying, I don't know yet. But that is something we need to remember. I did go ahead and also buy a ERS battery for Yuki, just in case we need it. Well, I know we will need it eventually, but I thought I'll go ahead and do it now. And we won't use it here. I'm hoping we can last until Mexico with our current one. And then we can fit in that one for Yuki. And he will take his penalty there and start at the back of the grid. But he will have fresh stuff for Brazil and Abu Dhabi if needed. So we are all ready for practice. And once again, I will catch you at the end of the FP3 session. I will show any of the highlights of anything interesting that happens. And I'll also show the practice results at the end of each session. I'll try to remember to show FP3 this time. I think last time I forgot to show the bottom 10 for that one, so I will try to remember to do that this time around. I'll catch you after practice. Here's the replay. Now watch this. Lewis Hamilton involved in this one. Dear me, they won't have been expecting that. There's been a crash. Sounds like a single car. Let's have a look. All eyes on Kevin Magnussen here. A definite collision there. That's very unfortunate. Someone spun out. Let's take a closer look. Let's have another look. Science is the focus here. What a spin out. We can take a look now. Now let's look, we're watching Nicholas Latifi. That looked like a very nasty spin. We've just had a spin. Let's take a look at the replay. Okay, here's the Ferrari. What a spin! Sounds like we've had a spin. We can take a look now. Watch this, there's Leclerc. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. The car's just gone. It's just a yellow at the moment. Just a yellow, keep the head down. Let's take a look at the replay. Now have a watch of this. Looks like Ocon. And that's an off, and a big off. Our race weekend continues as we head into FP3 and then qualifying. Drivers will need to perform with remarkable consistency if they're to secure a strong position on tomorrow's grid. It's not just about one moment of brilliance. No, they'll need to prove over the course of qualifying that they have what it takes to occupy those coveted places. Stay with us as we see who can deliver on motorsport's biggest stage. Yeah. 
I made a big fast spot. I, uh, I got to cut it down. Okay, good. Let's take a closer look. Now let's look at this. The focus on Sonoda. And that's a big smash. They'll have felt that. Oh, there's a spin. Let's take a look at the replay. Daniel Ricardo involved here. And this, yes, this is where they spun out. We've just had a crash on the track. Here's the replay. Watch this. There's Leclerc. Oh, a nasty crash there. Oh, we've had a spin. Let's have a look. Now watch this. Here's Alonso's car. And there it is. That's where they spin out. There's been contact and several cars involved. We can take a look now. Now we see Valtteri Bottas. There's been contact on the track. Let's take a closer look. Let's have another look. Science is the focus here. And there's the collision. It's caused absolute carnage. Sounds like there's been contact. Let's see what happened there. So let's look at this. There's Sergio Perez. And there's the crash. Mark my words, there'll be questions asked about that later. So the end of a practice, and practice three was probably the most incident filled. We had quite a few crashes, including essentially a four-car incident. Basically, it was two two-car incidents, but they both happened at the same time, and involved the second set of two cars crashing into the first set so that's why i would say it's a four car incident uh, a lot of penalties um, you probably saw in practice three that yuki had a bit of an incident with one of the alphas i don't know if it was bottas or zhou guan yu but whatever the fia have given him a penalty for that in the same way that Leclerc's got a penalty for running into, I think it was one of the Mercedes, I think it was George, at the hairpin. So both of those guys will be probably annoyed with that, I'd say. Leclerc only did 12 laps there, I see, so he probably called it a day. And I think the only other guy who retired from that session was Albon, who was involved in that group of four cars that collided with each other. Pierre, I think, averaged P2 across all three sessions. Uh, Yuki was a bit further back. He seemed to be about eight tenths behind in pretty much all three sessions, but he was able to get into the top 10 in all three of them. I remembered to do this this time for FP3. Yeah, a lot of penalties. Oh, it was um, Zhou Guan Yu that he crashed into that Yuki crashed into because he didn't go back out after only doing four laps. I will catch you after qualifying where hopefully we can get both our guys into Q2 because that's what we have said we would do. I'm not overly worried about that, but we did not get any rain in FP3. So if it's going to rain, according to the forecast, it's going to be in qualifying. We'll see how that affects things. Catch you later. So there is confirmation of the penalty for Yuki. He's been given a six place grid penalty. That sucks. Maybe we should take the uh, ERS thing here since he's already got a penalty. I think I might actually. We'll just do that, get it out of the way. 
someone spun out. Here's the replay. Now we see the Williams here. They lose it there. That's the spin. End of qualifying one and Verstappen leads the way again. We just went out the one time right at the end there. Pierre just cracked the top 10, nearly matching Fernando's time there, five thousandths of a second. And Yuki's only a couple hundredths behind Lando there for P12. The guys who missed out, I'm guessing, are the same. Have a look. The two Astons, the two Williams and Mick Schumacher. I did forget to mention there is a new patch out for this game. Uh, this is the first episode that I've got with the reduced DRS and improved dirty air or increased dirty air handling. So we'll see how that goes. Hopefully it makes the game a little bit more enjoyable. I know it's been a little bit frustrating with things like that, how powerful the DRS is and stuff like that, but they have tried to change that so I guess the next thing they got to figure out is to allow you to unlap yourself under the safety car or even just in general because of course you remember back to the Hungarian Grand Prix that pretty much killed us the development team are working on fixing it and hopefully they can uh, keep improving the game as it goes on I will see you after qualifying two no rain in qualifying one so it's got to be coming at some stage i think that was a crash let's have a look now just focus on the hats dear me they won't have been expecting that So as expected, Yuki did not make it through to Q3 there. Indeed, Pierre just managed it. Two tenths in front of Guan Yu and Yuki there. He couldn't find any time on his last lap. He was up in the first sector and then produced two yellow sectors and didn't improve on his time. Yuki did improve, but obviously not enough. Science the fastest in qualifying two, and the five missing out is Guan Yu, Sonoda, Norris, Ricardo, and Kevin Magnussen, who did not set a time because he crashed on his first lap. Still no rain, so if the forecast is going to be correct, then we could be ending, then we could end up with a rather interesting top 10. So it's the end of qualifying and sure enough the rain did hit about five minutes into Q3. So everybody except basically the bottom three there, Fernando, Esteban and Lewis didn't really get clean laps in. I think had they got their proper flying lap in with no water on the track, they probably would have pushed us down to P10. However, they didn't and we're up there. Obviously with the penalties to Charles, Carlos and Sergio, Pierre is going to shoot up those rankings a bit. Uh, Yuki is going to start at the back probably because of the fact that he has that sixth place penalty plus the fact that we're just going to get the ERS battery one out of the way now. He'd be starting back in 18th anyway, so 18th to 20th, not really much of a penalty in that regards. All in all, pretty happy with how qualifying went and we will see what the race brings. The time has come to fight it out. It's race day. Alpha Tauri did rather well in qualifying. Let's see if they can manage to achieve a strong start for the race itself. We saw a reasonable push from Mercedes in qualifying, and they'll have plenty of opportunities here to achieve a great result. A sunny day here with only a few clouds in the sky. If things stay this way, the weather shouldn't pose any challenges for the team. But now it's time for the team's cunning to emerge and for the driver's talent to shine. Let's see what's in store for us at the Japanese Grand Prix. Okay, so I think we are set. Gonna do a two-stop strategy, starting on the mediums, 
going to the hards and then finishing up on the softs for both guys. The flexibility we have with Pierre, given that he's starting up front or further up the front in P6 there, is that we might be able to save some of the tires and maybe get him home on one stop. But I think we're going to have to be aggressive with Yuki since he's starting P19. If we want to get him points for his home Grand Prix, I think being aggressive is the way to go. So Pierre is not as high up the field as I thought he would be after qualifying. There were three guys in front of him that had grid penalties. I guess they may only have three place grid penalties, which is why he's only picked up one spot instead of three. That's all right. We'll make do. Let's see how the Japanese Grand Prix goes for us. I hope I'm not tempting fate here, but there are quite a few clouds overhead as we look at the lineup on the grid. There we have Pierre Gasly. A top 10 position today, but will they be able to capitalize on it? The second Alpha Tauri driver there. They're in the back half of the pack, so they'll need to work hard if they want a podium finish. Will their hard work pay off today? Get ready, it's the Japanese Grand Prix. It's lights out and away we go. Cheers Crofty, I see a lot of soft compound runners there. Oh, okay, everybody except us are on the softs. Good to know. I need to go deploy, we need to get back in range of Valtteri. That's going to help Yuki. Yeah, he's got a second and a half on Joe now. So Pierre is chewing through these tyres right now. Two seconds off Valtteri. And Yuki is just chilling right behind Alwan. Actually, no, we'll keep it on push and we'll save some tyre, I think. Because I'm guessing Fern uh, Fernando Lewis will get past us. And we might be able to stick with him. Maybe. Pull away from Fernando while staying with it's a race position Lewis. Yeah, we don't have the top end speed, do we? We are not hanging on to the coattails, are we? All right, that's fine. We'll go back to neutral. Yuki is with Latifi now. Let's watch him. Got a couple seconds on Zhou Guan Yu. Bit of a mistake from Lance there. Sergio's in. Well, a lot of them are in. We're going to go in neutral, I think. See if we can pull away from Nicholas. No, we got passed by Nicholas. Never mind. Oh, for frick's sake, Pierre, what the hell are you doing? The first mistake Pierre's made in a while. How the hell did that happen? You better not have damaged the car. Because I'm not pitting him for a while. Yeah, I agree, mate. That's, uh, ordinary. No, there's no mechanical damage there, so that's fine. But he dropped behind Ocon and Science. All right, well, gonna have to do something, buddy. Let's have a look. 
Right, watch this. There's Schumacher. And yes, that's the locker. And so we don't need to worry about Yuki, I don't think. Right now. Ocon's in. What are they on? Are they on hards? No, they're on another set of softs. Okay. Do we switch to softs and then go hards? We need to probably save some engine, I think, now. We'll go aggressive on the tire still. Uh, Pierre, I think we need to box in this time by. We're going to pit him. He's going to go on a set of the hards right now. Yuki won't be pitting for another couple laps yet. So I think we're the only ones actually on the hard tire. A few guys on mediums. Leclerc, Russell, Bottas, Carlos, Mick Schumacher and Joe. If we can catch up to Daniel Ricardo, just using the natural pace of the tire, should be able to, and he's there. Okay, this is the last lap, so we're going to pit Yuki. Going to go on a set of those. Off comes the mediums, on go the hards. And away he goes. Probably be behind Joe. But should be in front of Albon. Same place. Don't know what Pierre's doing. He was on cruise. And now he's... Well, now he is going to have to go, isn't he? Alright, we'll push some engine then for him. Here's the replay. All eyes on Kevin Magnussen here. That crash is terrible news for the team. Oh, there you go. Pierre gets around... Ricardo. Just dived it up the inside of the hairpin. Nice move. Yeah. It's a crack. Let's take a closer look. Now let's watch this. The Alfa Romeo involved in this one. They've lost control and there's the crack. We'll catch up to Mick Schumacher now, I guess. We're not pitting. We're going to hope these tyres can go at least to the end. Yuki should be able to do it. Pierre might be a bit of a stretch, but we'll see, I guess. Go back to neutral, I think, on the ERS. Let's have a look. Now let's look at this. The focus on Sonoda. Oh my god, Yuki. Thank goodness nobody else was involved. That was a big crash. You know how bad is the uh the car? Team are devastating. They'll be questioning just what happened out there. We're gonna have to pit him, aren't we? Yuki, 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 Yuki. Unbelievable. This has been a terrible...
terrible race for us. You know what? We're not even going to watch him. Too bad, Yuki. We're going to watch Pierre. Don't care. And uh, that's all we're going to have to do. We're not even watching Yuki's pit stop. He was in a good position and flubbed it. Okay, I think we'll push on this lap. Let's go for it. Come on, Yuki. See if you can actually do something useful for us. No, we can't. Okay, well, whatever. No faster slap for us. Uh, Pierre needs to conserve the engine a bit. See that we're running out of that. Again, uh, Latifi was right with Albon there. Don't stroll. We can take a look now. Now let's have a look. It's Lance Stroll. They spun the car. What a disaster. This has not been a particularly great race for us, eh? Magnuson got a... hang on. He has. Magnuson's going on with a busted front wing. Okay. Max starts his last lap. be a pretty comfortable win for him. Eight seconds in front of Charles. Everybody stopped twice except for Pierre, Latifi and K-Mag. Oh, I guess that's how Latifi is in front of or was in front of Albon. Stopped one last time. Just let him through. One less uh, lap for us to do. Max Verstappen over the finish line and today's winner. Never got around Mick, eh? result from him today. Alpha Tauri did all right for themselves, didn't they? Although, of course, there's always more work to do. Absolutely. This was very promising, and now the team will be doing everything they can to make good on that promise. And after this result, the team is fourth in the constructor standings. Coming up next, we'll be crossing the pond all the way to Texas for the twists and turns of the United States Grand Prix. Right, so end of the race. Verstappen, Leclerc, Russell, your podium. Perez, Hamilton, Sainz, Bottas, Ocon, Alonso, and Gasly round out your points for the Japanese Grand Prix. Carlos Sainz gets the extra point for fastest lap. Now outside the points, you got both McLarens, Lando beating Daniel. Mick Schumacher P13, Yuki up 5 spots from where he started to P14, 
could have been so much better. Albon 15th, Vettel 16th, Latifi 17th, Guan Yu 18th, Stroll 19th, and K Mag rounds out the field. Driver's points, Charles pulls away even more from Carlos now. He's got a, what, 37 point lead on his teammate at the top there. Verstappen closed up quite a bit on Carlos, but I don't think he's going to be able to close enough to threaten P2 in the standings. It looks like Red Bull are going to be third and fourth. Uh, Lewis pulls away from Pierre. George closes in a fair amount for P6 there. Actually, the battle for P8 looks pretty tasty, doesn't it? you got Fernando, Ocon, and Valtteri all separated by 10 points. And I don't think anybody else finished in the points today. No, we didn't. The same three have not scored points yet. Vettel, Shumi, and Latifi. Constructors-wise, Red Bull gain some ground on Ferrari. But I think that championship is pretty much wrapped up. So Ferrari are probably focusing on next year's car. Mercedes look safe for P3. Alpine close up by five points on us and are now within, what, 13 points for P4 with four races to go. Of course, if we finish P5, we do get more wind tunnel time next year. So maybe our goal is to finish P5. Money-wise, we gain nearly 3.8 mil there. Of course, we don't have to pay out Yuki's bonus clause because he didn't finish in the points. That's not too bad. We are slowly building up our finances for next year, and we'll see how things go. So both Pierre and Yuki have a development point, so we're going to put that into probably defending. I think Pierre needs to get a bit better at defending. And what are we going to put Yuki's into? I might go reactions, actually. For him. So the board are still happy with how we are performing, saying that we exceeded their expectations. That may be so, but we did not exceed our expectations. We looked like we were going to be on for a bit better result. I think if Pierre had not have spun twice, probably could have finished P8 and I think if Yuki had not um, damaged his front wing with his little gravel track excursion he probably would have finished 11th or 12th I think he probably would have beaten the McLarens so yeah he probably would have been P11 but hey that's uh, how it goes sometimes so we got the manufacturing being completed of a few things coming up we also got a sponsorship obligation in a week as we head off to Texas for the US Grand Prix in 11 days. So that'll be next episode and hopefully our guys perform a little bit better around Circuit of the Americas than what they did around Suzuka, but we'll have to wait and see. Thank you very much for watching everybody. Have an awesome day. Like, subscribe. And I will catch you next time. Thanks for watching.